receive. How do you relate to people? I mean, those respect, love, those are the crucial things before you build the solutions. to my zone online school my name is teacher Mutsa and I have my friend here today let's say hi to everyone now this week's theme is autumn and we're gonna have so much fun talking about autumn but before we get into today's lesson it is very important for us to sanitize our hands so let's take our sanitizer Remember, sanitizing helps to make sure there are no germs and helps to prevent COVID-19 to spread. Another thing that helps is to practice good social distancing. So let's check. You check in beside you and in front of you. Well done. Today's lesson is about subsidizing, number bonds, decomposing, Odd and even numbers and capacity and mass as well. Our first exercise is very exciting. Let's turn to page nine. Here we have subsidizing. Now, this is a very interesting game that needs you to listen to the instructions. The first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to place the cards below on a soft box. It can be any box. It can be a cereal box. It can be a box for anything. Just make sure that the cards fit on the box. After you have glued them, you're going to cut them out into individual cards. As you can see, each one has dots in them. So that is a card. Once you have done that, you also need to make sure that you follow the rules of the game. The first rule is to place the card that you cut out face down in a pile. When it means face down, it means that you cannot see the cards and they have to be all together. And then players take turns to take a card, which means that if you are going to be the first player, you will be player A. And if you're going to be the second player, you'll be player B. Then, after that, player A will turn over a card. And if the card that is turned over is equal to the dots on player A's board, then that means they can cover with a counter. Remember, we made the cards, we cut them out, so you're going to cover with the counter. If not, which means that if there are no numbers on your card, you have to put the number back or the card back at the bottom of the pile, not at the top, at the bottom. And the first player to fill in the board with all their cards wins. Now we are going to try and play this game. As you can see, we have our board game here and we have cut out our cards. You can see them here. And we have put them on a soft box. We have chosen a cornflakes box. Now we are showing you how to play the game. When they say face down, it means that the side of the box is showing. So you have your cards face down. My friend here is going to be player A, which means that this is his board, and I will be player B, which means that this is my board. So he is going to be the first one 
to choose. So he's going to pick a card. Very good. Show us your card. What is your card? Okay, you can see that there are seven dots. So he needs to check on his board if he can find a box that has seven dots. Have you found it? Yes, well done. Okay, and he is placing it on the place. Well done. Now it is my turn. So I will take a card and my number is six. So I have to look for the number six on my board. Hmm. It looks like six is just here at the top. So I will put my six here. Okay. Uh-oh, teacher made a mistake. <laughs> well done. Thank you, my friend. That's why you're here. And this is what makes the game very interesting. This is six, and this is not six. So let me put it on six. Thank you. But remember, this is a game. I'm supposed to be winning. You're not supposed to be helping me. <laughs> All right. Now it is my friend's turn. Pick a card. Show us your number. Okay, Ooh, that looks like it is nine. Is that nine? Count the dots. Can you look for a nine? Is there a nine on your board? Make sure. Yes, that is a nine. So he gets to keep his card and stick it where the nine is. Well done. Now it is my turn, player B. And I have another card. This one also looks like it is nine. Make sure you count your dots. I know that this is nine just from looking, but I know that we all have to count. So this is nine. Now I have to look for nine on my board. Let me check. <laughs> yes, this is nine. So I'm going to stick nine. Ooh, now we both have two cards. Let's see. Pick a card. Mm -hmm. Show us. Well done. That looks like it's a five. Can you look for a five on your board? Keep searching. You can use your finger to check. Okay, very good. So he's going to stick five on his board. Ooh, now he has three and I have two. All right. Let me pick my card. I have a four. Now I need to check for a four. Do, 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 do. Let me just check this one properly. Mm, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Mm, that's a five. There's no four there. Oh no, I don't have a four. So remember the rules of the game. If I don't have what is on this card on my board, I have to put the card at the bottom of the pile. Now we can play this game all day, but we have many things we can do. But I know that you are going to enjoy this game. And you can play it with mom, dad, your brother, your sister, uncle, auntie, grandmother, grandfather, everyone in the family. And make sure that you count your dots. Have fun, and I hope you win. That was a fun game, but unfortunately, I didn't win. Anyway, we can move on to the next lesson, or the next exercise, rather, on page 11. On page 11, we have number bonds. Now, remember, a bond is when it adds up to 10. So, we are going to do the number F, but before we do that, let's take a look at the example that we have been given. It says 10 on top, then 3 on one side and 7 on the other. The point is that these two numbers must add up to 10. So if you add 7 plus 3, you can try it with your fingers. 7 plus 3, you are going to get 10. Let's take a look at number F. We are going to do that one on the board. Here we have 10 and we have 9. So we need to find out what is the next number. 
How do we do that? By counting on from the number that we have been given. So we have our nine here. So we say nine, ten. Which means that is only one number that is missing here. Now, I would like us to check. Every time you, che you finish a bond, you must check. So my friend and I here are going to check. So we are going to have our, te our nine fingers. Show me your nine fingers. Very good. Nine fingers. And we're going to add one more. And one more. And that becomes 10. So our answer is correct. 1 plus 9 equals 10. You're going to do the rest of the exercise by yourself. Remember to check. Let's move on to page 12. On page 12, we have decomposing. Now, decomposing means to break down, to separate, or to pull apart. We have our number there as an example. 36. Now 36 has been broken down to 30 plus 6. There's a secret with decomposing that I'm going to tell you. You have to write what you say in order for the answer to be correct. So 36 is 30 and 6. That's how they got 30 plus 6. We are now going to be doing the one that says 55. Let's take a look at the board. Here we have 55. So it says 55 equals dash plus dash. So we are going to say 55, which means we have our answer. So the first part of what we are saying is 50. So we write our 50. And the second part of what we are saying is 5. So we write our 5. Then our answer is correct. It now says 55 equals 50 plus 5. I want you to do the rest by yourself at home. And don't forget the little tricks that I have taught you. Enjoy yourself. <music> I hope you really enjoyed that exercise and remember to check your work. Let's now move on to the next page, which is on page 13. On page 13, we are talking about odd numbers and even numbers. Remember what odd numbers are and what even numbers are. We have been talking about it all the time. But this time you're going to color the odd numbers red and the even numbers green. And once you do that, you'll see that it comes out something like this. My friend has done it here with me. Can you show everyone at home? Yes. So this is very simple and I'll leave you to do this one by yourselves. Let's move on to page 14. On page 14, we are now talking about capacity. Now capacity means the amount that something can hold inside whether it can be a liquid like coffee or water or drink, how much can that container or object keep in it? We can see that it has an instruction that says, tick the containers that hold more water and cross the containers that hold less water. Fill in the blanks with more or less in the space provided. So you can see that we have object A, object B, and then the word, words more or less. Let's take a look at the first one. Object A is a jug. Now we all know a jug and object B is a cup. And the question or the sentence says, the jug has dash water, but the cup has dash water. When you look at these two objects, which one can hold more water? I think it is object A, the jug. So you will write, the jug has more water, but the cup has less water. Let's take a look at the second one. Here we have a mug 
and a bottle. Now, if you look at the pictures, you can actually tell which one has more or which one has less. Let's take a look at the sentence. It says, the mug has dash water, but the bottle has dash water. If you look closely, it looks like the water is more than what is in the bottle than what is in the mug. So our sentence will read, the mug has less water, but the bottle has more water. The rest of the exercise, I am sure you can do by yourselves. Remember, we are talking about capacity, which means how much can be held in that object. And if you're not sure, take a good look and read the sentences before you say you have completed the exercise. Have fun. Our next exercise can be found on page 15. Here we are talking about liters and milliliters. Now that is a difficult word to say. Let's say it together. Milliliters. Now liters and milliliters deal with liquids and how much can each one be. We are saying that for liters we show an L and for milliliters we show an M and an L. The note there says that one liter is exactly equal to a thousand milliliters. So we are going to try and do the exercise using that note. Let's take a look at the board. On the board we have number one. Number one says five liters and we are going to change or to convert it to milliliters. Now remember one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. So for me to change one liter into a thousand milliliters, I have to add three zeros. One, two, three. And it becomes milliliters. Let's take that same concept and put it here. We have our five liters. Now to change or to convert our five liters into milliliters, we are going to first write our five and then just like for our one liter we added three zeros, one, two, three, we are also going to add three zeros here. So we have one, two, three. But our answer is not complete because it only says 5,000. And 5,000 what? 5,000 donkeys? 5,000 horses? No. 5,000 milliliters. So we write our M and we write our L to show that this is 5,000 milliliters. I say it again, if you are going to write it, make sure that you don't forget your L and your M where you need to put it. Otherwise, the answer is wrong. Let's take a look at number eight. Now, instead of changing it from liters to milliliters, we are now changing from milliliters to liters. Let's take a look at it. Remember, our note says that one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Here, we have 10,000 milliliters. My goodness, it seems like a lot, doesn't it? But we are going to convert or to change it to liters. Remember, we have three zeros for milliliters. So when we are converting to liters, instead of adding the three zeros, we are taking them away. So you are going to take away one, two, three zeros. And let's write it down. We have our 10, and then we have taken away one, two, three. So it just becomes 10, but is that correct? No. Is it 10 horses? Is it 10 monkeys? 
No, it is ten liters. So we put our L next to our ten. Remember, if you don't put your L for liters or your ml for milliliters, the answer is wrong. I hope you can do the rest by yourselves. We're going to now do the second part of the exercise where it is problem solving. My friend here has turned into a scientist and on his table he has the things we need. I am going to read what he's going to be doing. The first problem says, David has one liter and two liter bottles. He pours the water from the small bottle into the large bottle. Mark where the water comes up to on the large bottle. So now, my friend is going, he has his one liter bottle. Show everyone your one liter bottle. Very good. And he has a two liter bottle. Show everyone your two liter bottle. Wonderful. Now he's going to pour what is in the one liter bottle into the two liter bottle. Let's go. Hold the bottles, yes. Remember, you don't have to use water. You can use other liquids as well. And make sure that when you're doing this, you try hard not to make a mess. And as you can see, that it is going right up. Very good. Now he is going to take a marker and he is going to mark where the water comes from. Now, before you mark it, I want you to get down to where the water is. This is called eye level. You need to check at eye level exactly where the water is. So, can you mark with, with your cookie where the water stops? Very good. Make it bigger so that we can see it at home later. Yes. Okay. Turn your bottle around. All right. So we can also see that at home, that the bottle, the one liter bottle stopped there. And the question was, mark where the water comes up on the large bottle. And that's exactly what we did. Let's move to the next one. It says, Sid has a full bottle of drink. He pours it into a jug. Which has greater capacity, the bottle or the jug? Now, instead of us having a bottle, we're going to use a glass. In our glass, it is quite full, and we have our jug on the other side. My friend, the scientist today, is going to pour what is in the glass as our bottle into the jug. So can we do that? Remember, try not to make a mess. I know that it is very, very tempting, but you can take your time. Now, as you can see, our glass is empty, but our jug still needs more uh, liquid for it to be full. So I think it is safe to say that the jug can hold more than the bottle. So you can write that as your answer as well. Do you agree? Yes. And the last one. Let's read the last one. It says, take a glass which is half full as the glass with the red oval. Now you can see that there is a red oval in your paper. I want you to do that one by yourself. And this is the last activity we have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and remember, every time you are done, you must sanitize your hands. But I think we have another activity on page 16. For page 16, you are going to definitely do this one by yourselves. We are not going to help you. We, all we are going to do is just read the instruction. And this says, Color the object that has more mass. Now you can see the different objects along with their names. It's up to you to decide which one has more. Now as we say goodbye, I've just noticed that we haven't really checked our social distancing. So let us check our social distancing. Very good. 
Okay, and I wonder, I haven't seen our friend, but before we look for our friend, let us sanitize again. Very good. Remember inside, in between, round and round, very good, and on the wrists. And let's dry our hands a little. Oh, Zashi, where are you? <laughs> there he is. So, from Zashi, my friend, and I, we would like to say bye. Hi, everyone. I'm back. And if you are scared of what you read on social media, talk to your parents and ask them the questions. They know everything. Until next time, bye. Regular joke. All these people know the old me's gone and dead like yesterday. I'm about to blow. Somebody clear the road. It's my moment, and I'm not letting go. I'm gonna rock you, rock you, rock you. Do you can't rock no more. I'm gonna rock you, rock you, rock you. Till you can't rock no more. About time I rock Been stuck in the dark too long It sucks, oh God, please hook a man up Life at the bottom ain't fun Got a son that's young and I hate to see him starve Wish I could spend more time But it's grind, got me grinding, dip in the mud Digging for diamonds, mining, trying to get my rap on course Just wanna see my family ball Maybe then we could all be involved Right now we apart and it's breaking my heart Wish I could take it back to how it was Back when it was all about love Now we all grown up with jobs and it sucks Cause there just ain't no love It's tough, guess I gotta go hard Gotta stack gold bricks in the vault Smile at some ghosts riding the walls Couple states in the south and the north Make wealth for my children's children Drop platinum hits, let them feel me I ain't never gonna stop till they kill me It's the boss 48, they gon' feel me I'm not a regular joke All these people know the old me's gone And dead like yesterday I'm about to blow Somebody clear the road It's my moment And I'm not letting go I'm gonna rock Really though, I ain't even frying. Fans asking me when it's dropping. I kept telling them soon. I was straight up lying. I had no clue. I gave up trying. It's been a long road running. So I'm cold, demons and ghosts troubling my soul. It was humbling, yo. But there ain't no stopping for me. Going hard, it's a break straight stop. And it's beat with kicks till it bleeds. I beat the defeat, but I'm back on my feet. But the work till it hurts. Put fire in the reverse. Ride till my tires catch fire and burst. Ride till I'm tired and lying. I hurt. So I'm a fire till your body's outlined in the streets. I'm a rider still young. No retire from me. Drop songs till you get tired of me. See signs you ever. Rich rapper, I live you in all. Been 